Rassenblad plus half a goal. We'll go to the second game. And again, these two teams could still be in top four action depending on United Spurs' results uh, tonight plus the United Villa game. But we'll take a look at the betting. It's Liverpool versus Spurs um, on matchbook.com. Currently, Liverpool can be back to 1.62. Spurs are available at 5.6. The draw is 4.8. Both teams to score, yes. Heavily favoured at 1.65 with no 2.34. The Asian handicap line see Spurs get one goal start at around 10 to 11, 1.91. And the goal line here is very high. It's three and a half, but I just shaded a little bit towards the under. So, Mark, take it away. Um, I, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Newcastle Spurs live. I did, and uh, I've never been as shocked for, for 20, 25 minutes at how poor a team defending was. And I guess a sack of the manager was the only way Daniel Levy could do that to take some of the brunt off himself. Yeah, I mean, it would be kind to say it was like watching kids trying to play adults. Uh, it was embarrassing, really. Uh, I know Stellini changed the system, changed, changed the approach, but that's still no excuse uh, for me. It started in the changing room. It's a, it's a mindset thing, and, and Tottenham were not ready or, or seemingly, I don't know, able uh, to... To, to halt the flow, really, it was uh, it was quite shocking. Um, yeah, one of those kind of ones you'll look back on in years to come and go, God, do you remember that day when Newcastle <laughs> steamrolled Spurs and scored five in that first half hour or whatever it was? It was it was crazy, really. But um, yeah, this is a tricky one to to, to preview because we haven't seen Spurs under Ryan Mason yet. Um, but we can focus on Liverpool because there has been improvements, and I think you can kind of go back to the. The game against Arsenal at Anfield, which people are sort of talking about as a turning point for Arsenal's season, whereas I think the reality is it's probably a bit more of a turning point for Liverpool. Um, kind of belief has come running back into the squad since that game um, because you know it's been a long time coming. They've been very, very inconsistent throughout the whole campaign, but they've finally started to have a bit of a, a full squad available to them uh, without too many distractions midweek either. It's meant a, a decent chance to, to rest, recover, go again building close to a best 11 with key players coming off the bench, game changers. And there's been a, an improvement in the intensity as well across the park, not just in midfield, but in forward areas too. And that they bulldozed Arsenal in that last hour, last hour at Anfield. Could, should have won the game. Then smash leads for six. Were admittedly quite shaky in the win against Forest, caught out by the counter-attack a couple of times, but then very, very impressive against West Ham. On Wednesday night at London Stadium, I thought that was a banana skin for Liverpool, but they were very good, dominated the ball, the shot count and, and you know, monstered the XG battle as well. So, um, if anything, they probably weren't clinical enough at West Ham. And, but I think it will breed confidence that the wins, three wins on the spin now, top four still looks out of sight, but they'll still continue to try and work towards that. And this is a good opportunity to, to close that gap further. Uh, they're already actually above Spurs as we speak, but Tottenham have that Thursday night game. So, we don't know how it will be going into the weekend. But yeah, City, Newcastle, United have all lost to Anfield. Arsenal probably could have, should have. Um, I think there's a, a great chance now for Liverpool to, to add Spurs to that list because we don't really know where we're at with Tottenham. But um, we expect some sort of reaction, whether that will come against Man United or this game against Liverpool. But, you know, employing Ryan Mason now as the as the figurehead doesn't change a huge amount. I know the, the Italian crew have, have kind of left the building, but... Mason was there throughout the Conte reign and Stellini as well. He's not a new figure, a new face or voice. Perhaps I'm being unfair on him, but it's hard to see a dramatic improvement um, without a kind of completely new um, <clears throat> coach coming into the into the dressing room and changing things. We don't know what, what Mason's going to try and do in terms of system-wise, but um, it's a tall ask to go to Liverpool and get a result considering they've lost eight of nine against the top six. Um in the reverse game, they were comfortably beaten and that was when Liverpool were going through a, a lean spell as well. That was quite a straightforward win for, for Liverpool. Um, so I'm expecting them to come at Spurs here. Fast, frantic, frantic from the opening whistle. I think Spurs have looked very vulnerable, very ponderous defensively. And I think there's an opportunity here for Liverpool to do some damage. But we seem to say it every time we talk about Tottenham, they do have world-class forwards available to them. And they have scored in 28 or 32 Premier League games this season. They've only failed to score twice on their travels. They've scored at Arsenal, Man City, Newcastle, Chelsea, Brighton. So I don't see any reason why they can't score at Liverpool, who have appeared to focus more on forward areas in recent weeks. Just one clean sheet in seven now, but things are starting to go for them in forward areas. So, yeah, Spurs to score in defeat is how I was going to look at this game. It's 3.0. For Liverpool to win and beat TTS, it's landed in five of Spurs' eight games against the top six already. Uh, wouldn't be too surprised to see a few goals in this game, as the market suggests. 
that they've all to come out on top. Yeah, Mark, you touched on it there, but like as bad a season the Spurs are having, if they beat, beat United before this game, they'll be in fifth place and a chance of top four. So they definitely do have those world-class players to score goals. And Asian, you are on similar lines with that goal line with maybe going a pro Liverpool approach here. They can't get top four, Dan. They can't get top four. Have you seen top four play? Stranger, well, that, well that, that's the other side, yeah. Sorry, I'm I only just, looking at the table here. So that's, just, that's my fault. I can't, I can't have Spurs being in the top four. I think they've been a mess. Really, we saw that. We saw. Look at the attitude. The attitude mm. stunk St James's Park out, didn't it? And um, and that's a cultural thing inside that dressing room. It's a dressing room full of players that ha- that aren't trying or haven't tried hard enough. Yeah, you th- might think, oh, there'd be a reaction for Ryan Mason, but it doesn't mean that all those bad eggs suddenly bec- become good. Um, yeah, they need. There's a lot of work for Spurs to do. I think. I think this summer it's a horrible fixture for them. Uh, Liverpool flying, obviously. And Anfield's, Anfield's been full of goals again this season. It averages 3.47 per game. It's the third highest, I think, behind Emirates and the Etihad. So lots of goals. They've scored Liverpool in 14 or 15 at home. They're going to score in this one, surely. Uh, and I think the smart money would be on them scoring multiple times if you, if you look at the way Tottenham have defended as a team lately. Not just the defenders, but, but in midfield as well. You know, pretty pretty weak, weak defending. And and over the course of the season, um, you might think this is a new thing for Spurs, but not really. Um, it's looking away at the top four, three, four, six and two. That's the amount of goals Spurs conceded uh, in their matches away to the current top four. Um, Liverpool are absolutely as good as anyone in the top four on their own patch, aren't they? So I think, I think they're going to score multiple times here. Um, I think Liverpool and BTTS is a great shout from Mark. I really do. But if you if you really don't think uh, Spurs will score, um, and, and they have scored in 14 to 16, Mark's bang on. But if you do think that that, that they won't here, then Liverpool and over 2.5 is probably the way to go. 2.22, still a good price. Um, Liverpool home games have gone over two and a half, uh, 60% of the time this season. And for Spurs in away games, 56% of the time. It's over two and a half. So the odds are in our favour. Um, and the form book also suggests that Liverpool are are in the mood to to give this Tottenham defence and midfield a really tough time. So, yes, see Liverpool winning and, and quite handily as well. OK, yeah. Broad agreement with the guys. Liverpool over two and a half, 2.22 for Adrian and the 